Newsmakers Saturday starts now. Thanks for joining us on Newsmakers Saturday. President Trump on Friday declared a national emergency to fund construction of the wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. The ACLU has already promised a lawsuit to challenge the president's move. People on the right generally believe that we do have a crisis along the border. People on the left, not so much. Tonight on Newsmakers Saturday, we will hear from two lawmen who also have very different views on illegal immigration enforcement. Let's begin with Pinal County Sheriff Mark Lamb, elected as the 24th Sheriff of Pinal County in January of 2017. Great to see you, Sheriff. Good to Appreciate see you. It. Appreciate Thanks it. for having me. Thanks for joining us. We're going to hear from um, Tony Estrada later on in the program. He is the Sheriff of uh, Santa Cruz good County. Man. He says there, he, good guy. Yes. He says there isn't a crisis on the border. He's down literally on the border in Santa Cruz County down at Nogales. What's your take? You're obviously in the interior more in Pinal County. What are you saying? So we're about 70 miles off the border. I mean, we definitely have an issue in our county. Um, and, it's, and it's an issue throughout the southwest border, especially here in Arizona. 40% of all illegal drugs are coming across our border. So anything that comes in America, 40% of everything in America. 40% yes. of everything coming in comes across. Comes across. Now, Democrats have been arguing that this is largely coming through now the ports of entry. Well, that's part of it. I mean, there's so many parts of it. They're coming through the ports of entry. But I'm telling you, I don't have ports of entry. And uh, we can go out every night and we'll find bodies and we'll find drugs. So every to, night. to say it's restricted to the ports of entry is just not true. Recently, you went out with a news crew. And yes. what, what did you see? I think they caught 11 or 12 bodies in one night, a truck full of uh, bundles of marijuana. Um, the next day or two days later, I was out there with patrol and they had just had uh, a car run from them and ended up getting six more bodies and five bundles of marijuana. So, yeah, it's, it's a problem. In Pinell County, how much of your crime do you believe is tied to illegal immigration and or drug trafficking, human smuggling? You know, I wish I knew that percentage to tell you that, but it's definitely part of it. It's definitely part of it. We've got, uh, we get pursuits all the time. We've got robberies and thefts that are going on. Obviously, there's drugs in our community, just like every other community. And it's tied to this stuff, you believe? Absolutely. It's no tied. doubt about it. Yeah. We've got some pictures of you with the president. This was uh, shortly before he left Washington, D.C. to head to El Paso, where he held his rally. This was with the sheriff's uh, meeting, the uh, national sheriff's meeting. Yes, that was, so we were there in D.C. for a National Sheriff's Association conference, and we had a roundtable scheduled with about 12 or 14 of us sheriffs, and we were to discuss with ICE and DHS and Border Patrol and uh, just discuss policies and what we could do better and what they could do better. And when we got up there, they said, hey, the president wants to meet with you. So we went down into the White House and uh, into the diplomat room, and, and he, this is the speech he gave. What did he say? Yeah, he talked about how important ICE was. He talked about, he gave a lot of st crime statistics for uh, people who are here in this country illegally, like robberies, sex assault, uh, thefts, murders, everything. Mm -hmm. He gave a lot of those stats, and it was something that was very eye-opening. Now, what are the sheriffs, I'm curious, what are the sheriffs in, in other parts, like in Pennsylvania or New Jersey or uh, Missouri, what, are, they, are they even touched by this stuff? Absolutely. Everybody's touched across America. Because if, if it's coming in through Arizona, it's not staying here. The cartel's pushing their product all across America. One of those sheriffs that was there is a sheriff out of Bristol County, Massachusetts. One was out of North Carolina. So these are definitely sheriffs that are not from border, sa border states, but they're experiencing the same amount of um, human trafficking and drug trafficking in their states that we are. And so, you know, I was there with uh, Sheriff uh, Wilmot, Sheriff Napier out of Pima County, Sheriff uh, Daniels out of Cochise County. Mm -hmm. Any one of those three will come in and tell you, and they're border counties. They'll tell you this is a crisis. Every day they're having their body, their human trafficking bodies, um, drug trafficking. This isn't about immigration anymore. I know there's people there that would like to say that that's what it is. That's interesting. So when we see these videos of people, you know, climbing, breaching the wall, uh, chase downs in the desert, groups dropping their loads of whatever, which is interesting because now a lot of the people coming over as part of their payment, yeah. they're asked to carry drugs across as well. That is almost always the case. Um, they're paying the cartel, then the cartel requires them to carry drugs across as well. And the women, the women are being raped a lot of the times. That's how they're, they're, being, they're paying. 
Um, when they get here, they'll pay the cartel in Mexico. When they get here, they're having to pay again. Would this video tell you that a wall doesn't work when you see people scaling it? You, look, you're always going to have people come around the wall. But the wall, definitely, you can watch that and see that the wall makes it a lot more difficult than a three-strand barbed wire, which is what we have at the, you know, at, at, uh, if you go straight down from our county, yeah. that's what you got. Exactly. And, and it's, it, I've, been, I've been there many times. Yeah. Around the cities, it's fortified and it's stair steps down. And by the time you get out into the rural parts, it is down to three stra strands of barbed wire, sometimes nothing. Right. Literally no, no, no fence at all. And there's parts where you can see where the fence ends. Sheriff Napier had one, a picture of a, where the fence ends, and you just walk right around the fence. There's not even a barbed wire fence there. So you, you believe that the president is doing the right thing. He's going to get 55 miles of border based on what Congress just passed, but he wants more. Do you believe he's in the right here? Yes, he is in the right. And if you talk to all the sheriffs, we all believe that he's in the right. Not every sheriff, obviously. There's sheriffs that have different politics, but... And we're going to hear you, from one tonight, three of uh, our, Tony Estrada, who doesn't believe it, and he's Santa Cruz County Sheriff. You know, and, and he's in a different, he's in a very small town where he has a wall right there, and he's dealing with mainly ports of entry. But you take like Yuma County and Cochise County, where remote areas, uh, Pima County is very large. Pima County is just to the south of us. So mm -hmm. They're coming through Pima County into our county. That's a huge border right. uh, expanse there in Pima S County. So the, the three sheriffs, the other three sheriffs are dealing with a lot more of the remote area where it's a lot easier for them to come across, a lot less border patrol, and especially if you don't give them the right funding. And that's the key piece to this is this isn't just about a wall. And I hope that the voters understand that. This is about border security. When we they, talk might, they might not know because all of the focus has been on whether... Trump, quote unquote, will get his wall. Yeah. And even at that, when we were there, he talked about the wall, that it becomes in some cases a proverbial wall. You may have a wall, a, a physical wall in some places, in other places it may be technology, so, um, sensors, that type of thing. Sure. And we just saw a, a little piece of that video uh, going back a few seconds where it was the vehicle barrier. Yeah. There it is. Yes. That's vehicle barrier. That will stop a car, but it will not stop a group. No, you can, you can climb walk, right over climb it. Climb right over it. And I'm not, I'm not sure the public is aware of that. I don't think they are. So when they hear that there's a fence along much of this border, 600 some miles, I believe yeah. we're up to now, 650 miles out of the 2,000, that that is not really tall 12 foot wall. No. Some of this is vehicle barrier. And that can be breached easily. You can walk right over it. And they do all day long. They'll wait for the Border Patrol to leave because we have no F. We can't. You can see them on the other side. Well, Border Patrol can't just sit there and wait for them to cross at some point. They're very patient. They wait. The cartel gets them across when they can. They're very good at what they do. This is a billion dollar industry that we're dealing with. And they're, they will work on whatever means they have to to get their product into our country, which is why you have to fund something like this, the border security, so that we as law enforcement can stay ahead of the cartel and keep up with the cartel and how, cripple them. How much, of your, how much of your crime in Pinal County is tied to this? Well, we have a lot of crime, and I, I, I don't know the statistics, but what I do know is about 10% of our jail population are people who are here illegally. And it's important that... People understand that we do not enforce um, immigration laws. Mm -hmm. What we enforce are laws in the state. So anybody who is in my jail committed a crime in this state. They were in possession of, of drugs or they uh, were fleeing from law enforcement. Those people that are in my facility, which make up about 10% of my population, 10%. are here illegally, but they committed a crime. So they, as soon as they're done paying for that crime or adjudicated for that crime, then we will, because we're a 287G jail, right. we will turn them over to Border you've Patrol. You've got 287G. I think you've got six officers yeah. who do 287G. Explain 287G, because we had this big flap with former Maricopa County Sheriff uh, Joe Arpaio. Right. So 287G is real simple. It, we work with ICE. So we have people that are trained by ICE. They can access ICE's computer. So when somebody comes into our facility, we can determine whether they have legal status to be in this country. When, if we determine that they are not here legally, then we notify ICE, and ICE will put a detainer on them. So when we're done, when they're done with their legal proceedings here in my county or in our state, then we call ICE, and ICE will come and pick them up. And from there, we don't know what ICE does with them, um, but 
that's what that's what 287G allows us to do is work with ICE in that uh, in the, that capacity. Okay, um, fentanyl. How Dangerous. much of a, how much of a problem are you seeing? Big problem. And this so, is coming primarily from Mexico. Yes. So just to give you an idea, Pima County about two weeks ago, in one day, Pima County recovered 14 pounds of heroin, almost six pounds of cocaine, almost nine pounds of methamphetamines, 10,000 fentanyl pills and a stolen handgun. Um, Maricopa County had a huge fentanyl bust, enough to kill, what, 50 million people, I think they said? So fentanyl, the cartel knows that we have an appetite here in America for um, opiates, for heroin, for prescription pain pills, and they're more than happy to fill that, to fill that. Uh, okay, so let me play devil's advocate. If you get a barrier, if you can get a, a barrier or a structure to try to slow down people moving across the border, I mean, we've heard of people, these guys flying drones over and dropping shipments, catapulting drugs over the fence, uh, even kids throwing uh, balls that, have, that are loaded with drugs, soccer balls, tennis balls. How do you stop this stuff? If, if the appetite is there, as you say, where there's a will, there's a way, right? Absolutely. And, then, and that's always something that we as law enforcement are going to have to combat. But why make it harder on ourselves? You put a wall around your house, nobody ever climbs, has, climbs over to my wall. I think maybe once in my life I've had somebody climb over my wall. But I still have a wall at my house. And to say that they're, to, to say that they're gonna get around it is not a reason to throw your hands in the air and say, look, we give up. We still have to fight it. We still have to put things in place that will help us do our job. A wall definitely will help funnel some of those areas so we can focus on the areas where we don't have the walls. Um, and like I said, it's a, it becomes a proverbial wall. We're, that technology is part of that wall. Mm -hmm. that, um, it may not be a physical wall, but, but it makes. But it, you're saying it makes the law enforcement job, Customs and Border Protection, easier if you start to block some parts of this border yep. and funnel people through areas where you can have manpower ready, and ready to go. Yeah, it's like, I mean, if you had a boat, would you rather have 20 holes in the boat or two holes in the boat? I mean, two holes are a lot easier to manage than 20. And so this allows, when you talk about border security, it allows us to be able to, to do our job a lot better, put things in place that, that narrow down the, fo the points of focus that we have in law enforcement. If you're, if you're in um, Pinal County now, your county, and you're stopped, and you are here illegally, what are your officers going to do in terms of figuring out who that person is, why they're here, what their status is? Can they? Do they, or do you wait for the jail to sort it out? Well, you know, we work a lot with Border Patrol and ICE, and so if they're with us out, on, maybe we're working a detail, um, we turn it over to them, and they handle the rest of what that. What if you're out there alone, one of your, one of your deputies? If we're out there alone, and there, there is some, if there's no indication that this person is here illegally, then we can contact ICE or the Border Patrol to come out and help us determine that. And, uh, if you have a question. If we have it. a question. Now, a lot of the people that we stop... Um, you know, if they're committing a crime, if they're carrying drugs, we're just going to go take them and book them in, and we'll deal with it at the jail. And then your, your right. guys there who are trained will do it. Uh, final word, how serious is the president about this, do you believe? He's very serious, and he should be serious about it. You know, and talk of getting rid of ICE is honestly just ludicrous. I mean, that would really, really uh, put a damper on what we can do here. Um, it would put our communities at risk. Appreciate it. Thank Good you. Good to see you. Good to Thank see you. you. And next on Fox 10 Newsmaker Saturday, I'm joined by Santa Cruz County Sheriff Tony Estrada. He has a much different take on this. He says there is no crisis on the border. Sheriff Estrada joins us next on Newsmaker Saturday. Thank you. And welcome back to Newsmaker Saturday. Proud to be joined by Santa Cruz County Sheriff Tony Estrada, first elected in 1992. Uh, he is a seven-term sheriff. He has been doing this a long time in Santa Cruz County. He is our guest on Newsmaker Saturday. We talked to, of course, uh, Pinal County Sheriff Mark Lamb earlier in the program who says there is a crisis at the border. Sheriff, thanks for your perspective on this. Appreciate you coming on. Anytime, anytime. Uh, you've been around a long time. Um, your sense of where we are with border security, and I know you can speak to, to Santa Cruz County. You know, definitely. We, we don't have a crisis down here. We definitely don't have a national emergency. What we do have 
is a challenge uh, to deal with uh, immigration, a, a challenge that can be easily taken care of if they do some comprehensive, common-sense approach to immigration. That can take care of it. Now, what's been happening down here, totally uncalled, ugly, uh, the way it looks, the uh, razor wire that we have in the urban downtown area between the ports of entry and it stretches out uh, above uh, beyond the uh, city limits into the county you know it is totally totally uncalled and and it is ugly it is threatening and it is dangerous and it's inhumane you know i i told somebody you know what when you're talking about livestock uh, you you have a uh, barbed wire you know but right here you've got human beings and you've got razor wire and and it is no emergency. There is no war. Uh, there is no crisis going down here. The numbers are down as far as people coming across the border. They've been down for quite a while. We don't see surges of people coming across on a Sheriff, regular basis. Is that because you do have a pretty serious wall in Nogales? Now, I understand, of course, and I've been there uh, many times. It's stair steps as you get further out east and west. But right where you are, that is a pretty fortified Port of entry, in in the downtown area, in the urban area, definitely it's not. Uh, you get people that obviously uh, on occasion will will climb, climb that fence and get over. Sometimes they will bring drugs with them, but that that's not a, a daily occurrence. It's not like there's a surge of those things happening. The wall is not going to stop any of that. Especially the issues. What I consider more important is drugs coming into the United States uh, through Mexico. We're looking at oh. video right now, Sheriff, if I can interrupt, of people climbing a less fortified wall. Still still a doing, but people climbing it and going over. Um, when you see that, and you have a very unique story. I know as a toddler in 1944, your mom brought you and your three brothers across the border to Arizona to join your father who had received approval to bring you all into America. So when you see this through that perspective, what do you see that maybe we don't see? Well, I think, you know, uh, the further you get from the border, the further you get inland from the border, you know, some of these uh, rhetorics uh, by the president and other people unfortunately resonate from people further out because they don't know, they don't understand the border. They, they believe that it's completely out of control, that people are just scrambling through illegally with drugs, and that is not the reality of what's happening along the border. The drugs are coming through definitely, but they're coming through the ports of entry. Now, as far as people climbing the fence or, or wall, we don't have a wall, it's kind of like a fence, boulder type uh, uh, wall or fence. Uh, if you have the boots on the ground, if you have the Border Patrol, and we have about a 1,000 Border Patrol agents here in Santa Cruz County. Mm -hmm. It's a very safe county. If, if you have the Border Patrol present uh, and add more boots on the ground, uh, those people uh, that would be or could be uh, trying to climb over uh, this barrier would be apprehended immediately. They would be uh, discouraged from doing that. But what we have now is like a battle zone. You know, we've had the soldiers, and all respect to them, we respect the soldiers, but they have, they have to follow orders. There's nothing they can do about it. But they've been down here with their, their, with their units and, and setting up that uh, razor wire. It, it just looks like we're expecting a war from people that are yeah. coming armed from Mexico with children. Sheriff, let me ask you something, because, you know, years ago, the way this worked was that migrant workers would come over. The border was hardly fortified at all. Um, and people would come over and work and then go back home to Mexico. Can you see that in some respects we have created this where we have 12 to 20 million people here now in the country illegally, that we created this in some measure by border security. We've trapped people in the interior who can't risk going back and forth as they used to do you know, in years past. Yeah, definitely. It, it's uh, more difficult and it's more expensive for them. And, and obviously they decide to stay here. And, and that, uh, that's tragic in a way because, you know, you take them away from their families and, and that, that is really cruel. Uh, this uh, razor wire, in my opinion, is cruel. It's uncalled for. It should never 
have been placed there. It seems like a who put a it up, resort. Sheriff? Who who was responsible for putting it up? Well, uh, I think uh, our current president, the one that ordered that. Uh, I don't know if Border Patrol recommended. I don't believe knowing Border Patrol, and we get along with them, have a great relationship. Great I think maybe the military put it up. Did they well, not? Well, the, yeah, the military put it up, but they, the orders came from Washington. Right. There's no question about it. I don't know if Border Patrol made the recommendations. Knowing the Border Patrol agents and the fact that I, I believe they have a lot of compassion and empathy when they do their work in, in dealing with illegal immigration, I would not believe that they would be recommending something uh, that uh, dangerous to let, let to, me throw something at you I want to throw a couple of numbers at you because we're, we're, we're getting a lot of conflicting numbers but one thing that is true um, is that Border Patrol agents apprehended more than a hundred thousand people trying to enter the country illegally in October of November of last year that number is way up from the same two months a year before that to many would indicate a crisis that we have people coming here largely from Central America what do you do about that? Well, you know, you, you address it the best you can. Obviously, you, you try to uh, have the personnel and technology that you need to be able to control that. But to, to say it's a crisis, uh, I don't believe it's a crisis. You know, I, I'd hate to think that when we really are faced as a nation with a real crisis, real, with a real uh, national emergency, how is this administration going to react to that? If right now, they react in, in this fashion with human beings. Sheriff, let me ask you uh, about walls. We get differing opinions on this from law enforcement. Do you believe walls are effective and work? Uh, walls are just another option, just like technology, just like boots in the ground, but they are not the answer. Walls have never been the answer. They never will be the answer. People will come through the ports of entry They'll come under the wall, they'll go around the wall, they'll go over the wall. The wall is not going to stop desperate people, you know, people that have come thousands and thousands of miles at great hardship, great danger, and at great expense. Nothing is going to deter them. I mean, they're, they're going to try. They're hoping for a better life, and they see obstacles. You know, when, when people say, well, why don't they just go there and apply? Uh, because these people are from extreme poverty. They don't have any, any documents. They don't have any paper trails. They have absolutely no chance of getting a visa, a work permit of any kind. So the only way they can do that, they're being driven away. Are we responsible for those folks, Sheriff? Are we responsible as a nation to those folks who want to come here? Because, I, I mean, you know as well as I that people from all over the world who don't have proximity to our border would love to come here. Yeah, definitely, and 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 we're a magnet, and and we're we're opportunity for people that that want to contribute and and help. Uh, yeah, we we are. And I can't say we're responsible, uh, but I think that we are in such a great position. We are such a great great country, so rich, and a country of immigrants that that people understand that around the world. They want to be part of that. So you can't blame them for that. You can't blame. Uh, hungry, desperate, poor people uh, for trying to have that dream and try to accomplish that dream. Sheriff it, Tony uh, Estrada, I sure appreciate your time today on Newsmaker Saturday. I hope we chat again, and I'd love to get you up here in person. Anytime. Can we anytime. do that? Come down to Nogales, Santa Cruz <laughs> County. It's safe. <laughs> well, I know the food is great. No doubt about that. I've had that many times. Thank you, Sheriff. Really You're, appreciate it. Tony Estrada, great, Santa Cruz great. County Sheriff. Best to you. And we are back in a moment on Newsmaker Saturday. Thanks again to our guests on Newsmaker Saturday, Sheriff Estrada and Sheriff Lamb. We'll see you next week on Newsmaker Saturday. And as always, you can reach me on social media, John Hook, Fox 10 on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next week on Fox 10 Newsmaker Saturday.